Paano paliitin ang chant in two weeks time? When you do this, hindi lang ito basta two weeks lang a quick fix. But it can actually help you sustain a good and healthy lifestyle. Now with this two weeks initiation period, magsisimula kayo in a lifestyle na magbabago. Hindi lang sa inyong pangangatawan, not just having a flat tummy na mas maliit ang siyan, but it could be the healing, yung pagaling na hinahanap niyo for those with problems sa kanilang blood sugar control, sa kanilang blood pressure, and at the same time, for those na mga hindi tumataba, pero yung chan ay lumalaki kapag sila ay nag-overeat, hindi man sila ganon ka nagiging mataba, nagiging obese, they don't gain weight, Pero yung chan nila ay parati lang lumalaki. Parating bloated, mapababae man o lalaki, kahit hindi umiinom, kahit hindi lasinggero, pero yung chan kung titingnan ay parang alcoholic. And that is because it's the visceral fats na nag-accumulate sa ating chan whenever we eat too much. So yung mga pagkain natin, Hindi lang yan basta sa energy, especially if you are eating a lot of fructose and glucose. Marami sa mga pagkain yan ay hindi talaga natin nagagamit. The problem when we keep on fueling on glucose kapag paray, panay kain natin ng mga sugar for energy, ang katawan natin hindi yan nakokonsume agad-agad. Like say for example, if you will eat rice like 3 cups, yung sugar na nasa rice na yon. Part of this will be used as energy, pero sa loob ng 2 to 3 hours, hindi mo mauubos yung buong calories na na kuha mo from that rice. So part of that is masustore kasi yung katawan natin, it will always maintain a normal blood sugar. Yun yung goal niya. At kapag sobra-sobra yung inyong kinakain, especially na glucose will be kept low normal or normal within 1 to 2 hours after consumption. So yung mangyayari, after 2 to 3 hours, gutom ka na naman ulit. Even if yung kinain mo the previous 2 hours is actually way more than you need. So saan na pupunta yung mga extra sugar, extra starch, extra glucose na kinakain niyo? It is being stored as, not as carbohydrates, not as proteins, but actually as fats. So tama yung narinig niyo. Your body, our body, the human body, the animal body is capable na i-convert ang carbohydrates into fats. Kung lalagyan natin ito ng sample na pagkain, ang mais, ang kanin, ang tinapay, kapag na-process na at sobra-sobra yung kinain natin in a day, it can actually be converted into taba. Pwede siyang maging mantika, pwede siyang maging oil. Pwede siya yung parang taba ng baboy na kinakain natin. So, that is a mechanism na that normal sa ating pangangatawan. It is important for us to understand that so that alam natin kung bakit na kahit pa umiiwas ka sa matatabang pagkain, kahit pa hindi ka umiinom, kahit pa wala kang bisyo, you can see that there are people na lumalaki talaga yung chan. Let me guess kung isa kayo dyan. Gano karami yung kinakain yung kanin? Kung hindi man kanin, kung hindi naman kayo nag rice ano ang pinagpapalit niyo sa rice? I know a lot, even doctors, na hindi man kumakain ng rice, but they are overeating their other carbohydrate sources. Number one on the list, tinapay, pandesal, especially dito sa Pilipinas. What else? Bread that are considered as healthy bread, high fiber bread, brown bread, uh all wheat bread, all of those high fiber na mataas, yung fiber content, pero hindi natin alam na yung kanyang starch content or yung overall net carb content is actually still very, very high. What else? Yung iba, hindi nga nag-bread kasi alam nilang process na, hindi na rin sila nagwa white rice, pero they are still eating a lot of this so-called superfoods Pero hindi natin na malayan that it's still super high in glucose. Brown rice, red rice, black rice. Yes, they are somewhat better than white rice. Pero when it comes to glucose na laman nila, hindi sila nagkakalayo. And meron naman mga 
members na ng Life Without Rice. They are so good in identifying na kahit anong kulay pa yan ng rice, rice pa rin yan. And they are seeing results. They've seen changes. Yung mga SGPT na matataas before, mababa na ngayon. Merong mga other inflammation like yung kanilang HbA1c from 9, 10, ngayon nasa 5.5 na lang. But still, nag-improve na yung kanilang lab values pero yung chan malaki pa din. You know kung ano yung nawala, hindi nila nawala. The other carbohydrates which would be the ones in our JGC Rojo food list, yung nasa caution list. Caution list meaning pwede yung ma-accommodate because they are usually natural na mga pagkain. Pero if you still need some healing, hindi pa kayo optimum health, then you should really be cautious. Dapat mag-ingat tayo before we devour those so-called natural, organic, healthy foods but loaded still with two of the common, basic, na simple sugars, either glucose and fructose. So for glucose, hindi lang ito mga matatamis lang. Hindi lang ito yung cocoa sugar. Hindi lang ito yung nasa honey. Hindi lang ito yung mga organic na mga sinasabing non-artificial sweeteners na natural. Even if they are natural, they're still loaded with glucose. So ano yon? Most likely, hindi sila matatamis, but they are compact form of glucose or sugar in the form of starch. So, root crops. Yung mga kamote, potato, ube, na paborito ng, ng marami dito sa atin. I, myself included, and my mom, na mahilig sa ube flavors. Th those root crops are actually loaded with starch. Corn, wheat products, all rice products, oatmeal, na usong-uso sa mga nagpapaka-healthy. But they are loaded with starch. And starch is, ano nga yung equivalent natin sa starch? Starch is just like paper bill. Para siyang pera na papel. As compared to coins, it's glucose. So, mabigat man kung tingnan yung coins. 100 peso, for example, na coins. As compared to 100 peso bill. But the moment we put them into our body, they are still the same 100 worth of glucose. Kaya as much as possible, we can avoid that. And ano yung isa na marami na hindi nakakaalam that it could actually lead into fatty liver, sobrang paglaki ng chan, very bloated, at mataas yung visceral fat component. Visceral fat is the kind of fat na gusto natin pababain sa ating katawan kasi sila yung delikado. Ito yung mga fats na nagsasurround sa ating internal organs and research show na kapag ito ay mataas ang component ito sa ating katawan, ito yung mas link into heart attacks and heart diseases. That's why hindi ibig sabihin na kung sino yung parang matabating nan ay siya na ang at risk agad sa heart attacks, and cardiovascular diseases. Maraming nagkakaroon ng cardiovascular complications like stroke and myocardial ischemia and all those na hindi mataba. But their level of visceral fat in the body and the inflammation in their body, kahit pa mababa yung kanilang LDL, ay pwede pa at risk of those complications. Because central obesity o yung paglaki ng chan yung mataba na ubis kumbaga pero yung nasa central part lang sa center lang sa nasa chan lang is actually more dangerous as compared to generalized or tawag natin peripheral obesity yung mga malalaki yung braso malalaki yung legs pero yung chan is hindi naman imposible hindi naman ganun ka posible na sobrang flat talaga ng chan unless it's the muscle that's bulking up their extremities but generally between someone who is even yung distribution ng fats as compared to someone na petit pero yung chance sobrang laki na hindi buntis, they are more at risk of cardiovascular complications. That's why today, pwedeng pwede na simula ninyo ang operation project palit din ng chan in two weeks time. At alam nyo ba kung ano yung pinakamagandang aspect ng two weeks challenge na ito? hindi mo kailangang magutom. And the most important reward of this is kung magiging successful ka in this two weeks of challenge, 
wedding wedding shank is sustained into such a way that you can incorporate this magiging lifetime member kana ng healthy lifestyle. I welcome you to join Life Without Tries and Low Carb Feasting and Fasting Communities Facebook groups natin yan to give you inspirations ko ano yung inyong kakainin and the questions that you are asking if ever you want to start this journey you can get support from LCFF community low carb feasting and fasting community na kung saan 99.9% siguro ng mga topics when it comes to low carb nutrition and fasting ay nasagot na dyan. so you join if ever hindi pa kayo member and you can even invite your family and friends para lahat tayo mas masaya kung mas marami tayo yung healthy kasi umubuhay tayo ng matagal hindi rin ganoon kasaya kung tayo tayo lang dapat kasama lahat including our loved ones so ano yung una ninyong gagawin try to commit first into what time will you eat last ngayong araw so kung today magsisimula kayo if it's your day one you can decide anong oras yung huli ninyong kain today. So, let's see. Maybe around 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the evening. Pwede, pwede na yan. So, by that time, pwede na kayong matulog. And you can just do some relaxing. If ever sanay kayong meron kayong routine, like say for example, mag-Netflix kayo or some bonding time with the family to watch a movie. Pwede naman na you can have something in your hand na may enjoy ninyo. So, we have plain tea, marami na yung paborito natin, yung mga cold brew tea, yung mga teas na hindi kailang init. And you can also enjoy, what else? Yung hilig sa salabat, you can put turmeric in it, and kung hindi naman ganun ka strict pa yung fasting, you can also add lemon concentrate, lemon juice, lemon extract, or calamansi. And you can just enjoy those good drinks without the insulin spike. Kasi yung insulin, is a hormone na tumataas kapag tayo ay kumakain ng pagkain matataas sa carbohydrates and also partly proteins but mostly the spike is from carbohydrates and when carbohydrates is high insulin is high and insulin the other name for insulin is fat storing hormone so actually walang taba na mofo form kung walang insulin because it is the driver of fat production. Fat production, pwedeng dalawang mangyari sa fat production. Magag, magiging energy siya, magagamit natin siya as energy, or it can be just stored as fats. And when your insulin is always high, then parati na siya nag-iimbak at nag-iimbak at yung pinakapaboritong compartment ng ating katawan when it comes to fat storage is yung ating chan. So, kung meron kayong malaking chan, alam ninyong marami yung fats na napatago dyan, then it's still good news because you have the savings for fasting. So, kailangan natin spend yan. Hindi yan maganda na parati lang siyang nandyan at hindi nagagamit. The best form of fats are the fats that we use either for repair in our body or to be used as energy. And again, this is the important thing. Pababain yung insulin para yung nakaimbak na nating taba sa katawan ay magagamit as energy. So now na alam nyo na kung anong oras kayo, last kumain ngayong araw, then you can plan your day ahead the next day kung anong oras kayo kakain. As a start, even if hindi nyo kailangan magutom, you just have to have the right mindset na hindi rin tayo kailangan kumain ng mayat maya We can easily survive 12 hours of not eating. Itulog mo lang yan. Kung, for example, last meal mo is 7 o'clock in the morning, by the morning you wake up, by 7 o'clock, pwede, pwede ka na mag-breakfast kung yun talaga yung gusto mo. And if ever naman you think na kaya mo pang i-prolong ito to 8 o'clock, to 9 o'clock, then that's even better when it comes to pampaliit ng chan. Merong mga iba na takot, baka lumiit nga yung chan ko, pero baka mas sobrang payat na payat ko na. So this is where the technique will happen para Yung chan nyo lang yung lumiit, but hindi kayo mag-lead into muscle wasting, hindi kayo mangangayayat, hindi kayo magiging butot balat tingnan. You will still preserve that youthful glow, you will still preserve those muscles that you've been working hard para maattain, but yung tummy ninyo ay liliit. And that is by planning kung ano yung kakainin nyo during the day. Kung hindi pa kayo naka-meal prep, kung hindi pa kayo nakapag-grocery, then it's okay, the usual 
meals ng Pinoy ay pasok sa way of eating na ito. You just have to tweak it a little. Meron lang kakaunting adjustment. At ano yung adjustment na yun? Para sa mga matatagal na member ng Life Without Rice, ano yun? Kung ang basic na pagkain, say for example, silog. Uh, tapa silog. Tap silog. So sa tap silog, you have rice, you have egg, and you have tapa. So kung magsa-start ka ng low-carb journey para mapaliit yung chan mo, ano yung kukunin nyo dito? You can just actually remove the rice and you can still enjoy the itlog and the tapa. Kung kulang sa inyong pakiramdam, yung kinain yung itlog at tapa, you can add extra egg or extra tapa. Kung mas mahal yung tapa, then extra egg. Hindi kailangan mahal. Kung hindi man merong kung walang extra egg or extra tapa, I'm sure there are others there. Pwedeng isda, pwedeng chicken, pwedeng seafood, pwedeng kahit ano. So, yung mga hipon. You can do hipon omelette na hindi kami fan ni One True Love. Pero alam ko, healthy yon at paborito yon ni Mandro at ni Maming. And you can have that, I think, in as simple as 20 pesos or 30 pesos. Makakagawa ka na ng ilang party ng hipon with egg na feeling ko before, scam na scam ako. Kasi yung mukha nga niya, parang ang sarap-sarap. Parang siyang burger party, pero hipon pala. That's why I think, kung hindi lang ako nag-expect, sana na burger patty siya, baka hindi ako ganun ka-aversive sa kanya. But that is another story for another time. Just the point now is, hindi kailangang magastos ang low carb. And yung isang mindset na kailangang isipin, because if you will have breakfast at 7 or 8 o'clock, marami yung nasanay, especially yung mga daddies, na nagsa-snacks in the morning, especially kung meron silang routine at work, 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, ay nagsa-snack sila. So, the main meals, covered na natin yan, ha? Between a side dish na usually vegetables or egg, and then a main meal na usually meat or seafood or isda, and ang rice, kunin lang yung rice. And then you can still enjoy the same side dish, like chapsoy or utan bisaya or pinakbet, and then your main dish, yung meat, na meron naman talaga usually yung main meat, so you can just enjoy that without the rice. So covered na tayo sa inyong three meals. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can still enjoy that one. So yung ating concern na lang would be your snacks. So yung snacks niyo ng morning and afternoon. Yung mindset na yung snacks is something finger food or something light like a bread or a cracker or ano pa bang usual na snack niyo Yung mga sandwiches. Actually, when it comes to low-carb nutrition, hindi sila kailangan light. You can even have the same snacks kung gusto niyo talagang kumain during break time. Pwede, pwede na kung ano yung kinain niyo sa umaga, yun pa rin yung gagawin yung snacks. Or i-advance niyo yung kain niyo sa lunch time. So kung nag, nag-tapsilog kayo without the sinig, sinangag, sinangag ba? The fried rice, then you can still have the tapa, beef jerky without the sugar, or egg. Ibang luto naman. So, sabi nga ni Eileen, I think I saw one post of Eileen recently na alam mong naka-low-carb ka na if nag-iisip ka na ng kung anong luto na gitlog pa ang pwede mong gawin. Because egg is a very, very good staple para sa mga low-carbers. It's high in healthy, natural fats and good quality proteins with only less than 1 gram of net carbohydrates per piece. So, kung ang carbs lang yung babasehan, you can eat as much as 20 eggs in a day. But of course, hindi lang tayo ganyan lang yung iniisip natin. Hindi lang basta sa calories, hindi lang basta sa macronutrients. We are also looking into sustainability. And we know, hindi tayo mabubuhay ng itlog lang araw-araw. Yes, I can live with egg every day, but not with egg alone. Sanay ako merong ibang flavors. At least dalawang ulam. So, kung isa man yung ulam, isa yung ito-declare from rice, so kung egg yun, at least dapat merong something else. And it doesn't need to be expensive again. Pwede kahit ano lang, kakarampot na giniling na pork, or isang piece ng chicken, or isang isda. Okay? So, when it comes to isda naman, yung mga pinaka-nutritious and pinaka-healthy and also, pinakamura are actually yung mga maliliit na isda. So, 
the smaller they are, the lower their mercury content, their heavy metal content, kasi way below pa sila sa food chain, and they are also complete. Kasi when you cook them, at gawin mo silang crispy, or gawin mo silang pressure cook, like you make a sardine out of it, you can eat the bones and the internal organs even, and that's complete nutrition. Meron na siyang calcium. Kasi if you are only eating meat most of the time, then it's devoid of calcium. But if you are eating yung mga maliliit na mga isda na yan, you eat it whole, you are also consuming good quality of calcium. Na very, very healthy. And sardines, yung mga maliliit, are also high in omega-3. So that's one of the healthiest fats that we can consume. But generally, for me, hindi ako mahilig sa maliliit na isda kasi tamad akong maghimay-himay. So, the minimum siguro na isda na size na kinakain ko is galunggong kasi mas madali siyang i-dissect. But generally, I like fish. I just want to eat easy fish. Yun lang yung point ko. But when it comes to nutrition, and if you have the patience, then better go for the small fishes. Sila yung pinaka-healthy and also pinaka-mura. Okay? So, when it comes to your snacks, hindi kailangang light. You can even have the same egg, the same meat, the same proteins, the same pork chop, the same fried chicken, kung gusto nyo for snacks. And one thing that is good with this kind of lifestyle, day one, day two, day three, you can eat as much as you want. You just do it routinely, patuloy lang, kainin lang yung mga gusto ninyong pagkain, and you can see that by day four, or depende sa inyong level of adaptation, which I know, marami ding iba na madaling nakaka-adjust dahil sanay silang mag-adjust. Dahil tayo ay sanay mag-adjust sa mga bagay-bagay. You can even transition in as easy as one day. By the next day, if you can only commit to zero carbohydrates or very low carbohydrates on your day one, first day lang yung feeling mong struggle. If ever there will become a point na parang sasakit yung ulo ninyo, that's just electrolyte need. So, just do the salt fix. Isang kakaramput na, ano lang, pinch of salt. Put it in your mouth. Take some water. And in as fast as five minutes, para yung magic. Mawawala yung headache. Mawawala yung pagkahilo. Even yung pagiging mainitin ng ulo ninyo. Pwede yung mawala. It's just electrolytes. And it's also the sugar craving brain na yun talaga yung parang, parang, hindi mo malamang sinasapian ka na maghahanap ka talaga ng sugar. But if you can move past that 18-hour break from your last glucose intake, say for example, yung last mo na glucose would be tonight, no? Or kung gusto mong mag-start ngayon, why not? So say for example, 7 o'clock, yung last mong kain na merong kanin, expect na until 18 hours the next day, so that's 18 hours, that's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, tama ba? So by that time, expect that you will be craving for sugar, for rice, for for bread, or kung ano mang makakasustain ang inyong usual blood glucose. Hindi normal ha, kasi blood glucose, merong yung normal 70 to 100, but karamihan sa mga glucose loaders, sa mga sanay kumakain at ng few fuel ng carbohydrates, their blood sugar is actually way higher than normal most times of the day. So if you can just survive the first 18 hours na wala kang dependency on glucose, then you can just pagpatuloy mo lang yan by eating healthier foods. So proteins is the easiest way to go to and the natural one. So meat lang and patuloy mo lang yan, you will see by the next day, hindi ka na gutom. If you are used to being hungry by 7 o'clock in the morning, magugulat ka na lang na 7, 8, 9, 10, even 11, ay hindi ka na gutom. And once you are already in that state, importante for those na payat, you have to consciously time your meals. Kung pwede palang planuhin ninyo na kung kayang magkain kayo ng up to 3 meals a day, kung saan distributed yung inyong protein intake, just to ensure na yung absorption ng yung proteins is good, especially for those working out. And kung hindi naman, just two meals of heavy protein meal is also good. Para sa mga nagtatanong na merong mataas na creatinine, mataas na uric acid, meron ng CKD 1, 2, or 3 na natakot kumain ng proteins, 
there is actually no reason to be afraid of proteins. But the details of that we've discussed in our LCF Masterclass for Chronic Kidney Disease, Hyperuricemia, and Kidney Stone Masterclass is just one masterclass discussing the major problems in kidney that can be managed or can be helped pwede matulungan with low-carb nutrition and fasting, then I invite you to join that one. Nandiyan lang yung mga admins natin to help you with the enrollment. It's just an online class na you can watch anytime on demand kung kailan gusto at your own convenience. And it's a 21-day class, but if kayo ay masipag, you can finish it in one day kung gusto niya lang. So anyway, there is a way for that. And para sa mga gustong paliitin yung chan, but ayo mga yaya, then you can time your meals every three hours in a, in a six-hour window period. Ha? Kung magpapatuloy kayo ng 16 to 18 hours of fasting, you can still actually accommodate three meal time. So, lagay niyo dyan, for example, tagdadalawang egg per meal, and magdadeside kayo kung ano yung inyong main proteins like fish and chicken, and chicken and pork, and pork and beef. No, hindi makamasyadong bias sa mga meat na yan because those are the meats that I usually eat and also the meat that I like. So, but you can choose your own. Meron tayong JGC Rojo food list and you can choose anything on the safe list at hindi nyo kailangan mong problema when it comes to baka pabalik-balik, baka maumay na kayo. Sobrang daming luto yan. Just pick a certain region in the Philippines at alam mong meron silang specialty when it comes to meat and you can choose that anytime, any day para hindi kayo maumay. So if you can continue doing that, makikita nyo lang that the break time in between the snack time ay hindi na kayo gutom. And when you are already not hungry, that is a sign that you're already fat adapted. So you just start with low carb. Kung hindi mo kayo maka-adjust agad-agad in one day or two days or three days, that is what the two weeks is for. Yung two weeks na yan is for your adjustment period for you to get used to this way of eating no need to even con be conscious about fasting. Kung hindi nyo kaya yung 12 hours, kahit hindi na kayo mag-fasting, before you, you sleep, pwede kayong kumain kung gusto niyo sa simula. But if you do it right, it would be impossible for you to keep on eating the whole day while you are awake because your body will become appetite corrected. You will feel more satiated, mas magiging conscious na kanyo sa inyong appetite, and you will know when you already no longer need to eat so much. So, what happens would be, the first two weeks, pwede kayong kumain as much as you want, as long as it's low carb, and by the third week, do na kayo pwede maging conscious about increasing your fasting window. So, from 12 hours, pwede na kayong umakyat into 14, 16 hours, depende sa inyong health goal, to which are all outlined also. Kasi meron tayong goals sa ating pagpa-fasting at paglo-low carb. Hindi lang weight. The weight is just secondary. The weight is just very superficial. But it's more important that we focus on our healing goal. So ano yung health goals mo? And then yung weight naman na goals is just, is parang pang ano lang siya, pang adjust. Okay? It's just for adjustment period so that as you heal, mata, mapupunta ka pa rin sa weight na goal mo. Either losing weight or maintaining your weight or even increasing weight. So, sa mga marami na mga mommies and daddies dyan na very successful in their weight, lo weight loss journey at nagtatanong na how to go about increasing their body weight the healthy way. Marami na tayong videos about it. You can just continue to eat your proteins and then start building muscles through resistance training and also have ample amount of rest. So I hope that in two weeks' time, wag nyo madaliin yung inyong arms, yung inyong legs, yung inyong face, but focus on your tummy because central obesity is very important indicator when it comes to your cardiovascular health. So I hope I will see your before and after after two weeks, and I hope you will be very successful in your palit ng chan, flat tummy at sa mga lalaki. Good news, it's even easier for you. Marami na akong kakilala without much effort, with even lesser amount of gym na activities. But when I started doing low-carb fasting, high-protein intake, with even lower gym na 
transitions and and times they are growing and seeing their abs so lumalabas yung kanilang abs and that is not impossible marami na tayong coaches that are guiding other other enrollees into this way of life and they're very very successful and also hi sa mga nagpa-follow sa ating low carbers and fasters na mga instructor instructors sa gym they're one of those very heartwarming talaga yung response kasi for the longest time yung kanilang training yung kanilang mga certificates is usually more on high carb diet but the moment they started doing low carb and sila mismo ang experience ng wonder of low carb they are very grateful and happy na kaya pala and the way they build muscle now is a way na very sustainable hindi fluctuating at hindi madaling nawawala even if they are fasting the muscle that they built is still being preserved so i think yun lang muna for now good luck everybody thank you so much for always being with us and i hope you remember to stay low carb so that we all stay safe. Bye. Have a good day.